DNA, the genetic material, the code of life. I find it fascinating. I'm fascinating by, fascinated by the mystery of it, the complexity of DNA. I'm fascinated that now we have access to that mystery. I have always been interested in genetics and in DNA. And another property of DNA that I think is part of its elegance is its shape, its structure. That elegant double helix that goes on and on, representing all of your genetic information. And now, DNA is cool. People are interested in it, all of a sudden. People want to know more about their own DNA. They are able to choose to do DNA testing and learn about the deepest secrets of their biology, their DNA. But in order to make a decision about whether or not you will do DNA testing, you really need to know about the pros and cons of the technology, the risks and the benefits. And that's what we'll discuss now. Let's begin the story in June of the year 2000, when President Bill Clinton and prominent scientists made an announcement from the White House. They talked about the completion of the first draft of the human genome. The genome is the complete set of DNA sequences that's responsible for the physical and uh, various types of traits of every human being. This was a tremendous advance and really the start of the genomic era. President Clinton at that time called it the most wondrous map ever produced by humankind. But he also cautioned that there would be issues with regard to privacy because after all, you're revealing your deepest secrets when your DNA is sequenced. And he warned that DNA technology should never be used to stigmatize or discriminate against any individual or group. And so we continue with the story and the issues of DNA testing with my own genetic legacy. <coughs> I discovered my own genetic legacy the old-fashioned way through family medical history. My father developed Parkinson's disease later on in life, as did his two sisters. And the fact that it was he and his sisters put me in a category of high risk for Parkinson's disease. It runs in my family. And when he was first diagnosed, we were asked to participate in a research study which involved doing various types of tests. For instance, we were asked to walk a straight line and turn around, walk back again. They asked us to draw shapes like a spiral. Those two tests are associated with difficulties that people with advanced Parkinson's have. It's difficult for them to walk in certain ways and to draw certain types of patterns. We also did memory tests, we did a scratch and sniff test, and we, at the end, took a blood test. The blood test was meant to detect a form of a gene called LARC2. That variant of the gene they were looking for is the one that increases your risk for Parkinson's disease. And at that point, they asked me if I wanted to know, do I have that variant of the gene? And I thought about it very seriously and said no. At that point in time, I realized it wouldn't be that valuable for me to know about it because that variant raises the risk to, of, of about 30% of people with that variant will develop Parkinson's. And so even if I had that form of a gene, there was no certain, certainly no certainty that I would develop the disease. And in addition, there aren't that many things that you can do to delay or block the development of Parkinson's if you're going to get it. So I said no at that point, deciding not to know. I figured that if I did get a report that I had the gene, I would wake up every morning, put my hand out to see if the shaking has started, because Parkinson's is a trembling disorder of the nervous system. That being said, there is tremendous value in uh, learning about certain types of genes for certain types of conditions. And 
this type of uh, research can really help people deal with health issues. So clinical genetic testing is done when there are medical issues that could involve genetic factors. Clinical genetic testing is also done under the advice and guidance of your physician and a genetic counselor. The physician understands the biology of the disease. The genetic counselor can advise with regard to which genes should be tested. They can analyze the data and explain it to the patient. And they can also unravel the complexity of the relationship between the gene and the condition or the disease because it is incredibly complex. Besides clinical genetic testing, there's another kind of genetic testing which I'm sure that you've heard about, and that's the direct-to-consumer DNA testing, <coughs> commercial uh, DNA testing. It's also called recreational DNA testing or entertainment genetics because, hey, it's fun. The companies such as 23andMe and uh, Ancestry.com advertise that you can uncover all sorts of secrets about your family tree and you can make connections in the database to uh, undiscovered, yet undiscovered relatives. Uh, they also offer some genetic testing related to health. And so uh, this type of genetic testing um, has some pros, some positive aspects to it because there are people who get satisfaction from learning about that information. 23andMe on its website claims that your data is private and protected. They also boast that their tests use real science, real data. But critics have charged these companies with actually using shaky science and overstating their ability to protect your privacy. So those are the main issues with regard to this kind of testing. The issue of accuracy and the issue of privacy. There have been research studies that show that some of the data uncovered by this type of genetic testing may contain false positives or false negatives. A false positive is when you're told you have a variant of a gene that's associated with a disease or a condition but actually, that variant turns out to be harmless. Meanwhile, when you get that news, you start to worry. It can be very stressful. People who get a report like that might go on to further testing, even medical intervention, when it turns out that that's totally unnecessary. So that's one possible harmful outcome if it's a false positive. A false negative occurs when the tests are not thorough enough to uncover all of the potential problems. And uh, the DNA testing done by commercial genetics testing companies don't always sequence the whole genome. They may look at different sections of a gene and they may overlook important information. And that leads to a false negative. You think you're free of that issue um, and yet you may actually have that issue that it simply hasn't been found. So those are some of the issues with regard to accuracy. And what about the privacy issues? Can they really keep your data private and protected? Well, when you do these types of tests, they send you a kit, you spit into a tube, and you send it away to the company. They do chemical analysis to find your DNA sequence, and that goes into a database. We all know about databases. They can be breached, okay? It, regardless of the information. If your private information is in a database, hackers can get into that database and they can access your data and they can misuse it if they so desire. If your password is breached, if your password is exposed, it's very annoying. But you can go and change your password and recover your privacy. But if your DNA data is exposed, there's no changing that data. The DNA is the essence of what you are, and that data would then be accessible to people who may not have your best interests at heart. Um, another way that they can get access to your DNA is through various loopholes, even a legal loophole. Um, a recent case, a judge issued a warrant for a detective in Florida 
to, um, uh, to give him access to a particular DNA database that had close to a million users. That's a lot of data on a lot of people that he had access to. Um, of course, it was for a valid reason for a forensic investigation. Nevertheless, it just shows that that data is, can be accessible and you may lose your privacy. And how can they misuse that data? How can people misuse that data? They can use it to discriminate against you, to stigmatize you, just as President Clinton warned um, in the year 2000 when this was first announced. Uh, and if, if that's the case, what can we do about it? Well, the good news is that there is legislation that protects us to a certain extent. The Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act of 2008, also called GINA, prevents um, insurance companies from blocking you from getting health insurance based on your DNA profile. It also prevents employers from discriminating against people based on their genetic profile. However, GINA is limited. It, for instance, um, in life insurance, long-term care insurance, and disability insurance, we don't have those protections. And it is possible to use your genetic information to deny you those types of policies. So if those, that type of insurance is important to you, you may want to delay or simply avoid doing commercial DNA testing uh, for security issues and privacy issues. Now, there are decisions that you need to make if you're considering DNA testing. Uh, first of all, you have to decide what kind of DNA testing do you want to do. You might choose clinical DNA testing where you um, have the uh, support system of your physician and the genetic counselor that offer their expertise and give you advice and guidance in terms of which tests to do and how to understand them. And then there's the commercial or direct-to-consumer DNA testing. And we've talked about some of the flaws involved in that procedure involving privacy issues and accuracy issues. Um, the other consideration when making this decision is that the information that's revealed by DNA testing could very well be surprising and perhaps even disturbing. For instance, with ancestry testing, it's possible that you may uncover a deep, dark, hidden family secret. You may also learn with regard to health testing that you carry a, a gene for a particular trait and that might be a, a serious disease or disorder. Um, that could be very difficult information to absorb. Uh, we need resilience, we need strength to be able to manage that kind of information. And that type of strength and resilience helps us to get through uh, these types of life events. And, the, and DNA testing can be a life-changing event. So ask yourself whether you have the strength to handle the type of information that might be revealed by DNA testing. When your DNA is in the database, you have issues of privacy, as we discussed. When your DNA is accessible, there are so many implications that you need to consider. Um, and so when you're making this decision, consider your resilience, ability to handle life-changing information, as well as the um, issue of how your DNA information is going to be used. Remember, once your DNA is in that database, once the genie is out of the bottle, you can't put it back. Thank you. <laughs>